Since March 2018, my different business ventures have generated 2.9 million net sales. And it took me a long time to figure things out. So let me bring you to the beginning of the story. At one point in my life, I wasn't practicing Islam. Yeah, so that's what it is. My girl, smack your son, your brain, my Yep, that was me. The reason I'm sharing this story with you is because my journey from not practicing Islam to embracing it inspired me to pursue a specific type of business and way of earning a living. Because obviously as a Muslim, you want to have your time, your freedom to worship Allah. And your ability to worship can be affected by your lifestyle and how you earn a living. For me, it all began when I started practicing Islam. I went to Egypt to learn Arabic and study my religion more seriously. But at one point, I realized I needed to earn a living. Otherwise, I couldn't stay in Egypt without worrying about paying rent. This pushed me to start thinking of ways to earn money. As soon as I got to Egypt, I thought of starting a student accommodation service for others wanting to do the same thing I did, since I found it difficult to settle down initially. I figured, having been there for a few months, I could help other students in exchange for a fee. However, that business didn't end up working. Then I had the idea of learning how to sew Islamic clothing, building a brand and selling my clothes online. That didn't work out either. Then I visited a brother who was a graphic designer and I saw in his house he had a very nice setup. So I realized that working online would be perfect as a student of Islamic knowledge. I could study and work from my laptop staying at home to continue my studies. I tried teaching Arabic online but I didn't believe it was possible to earn a living that way. So I stopped doing that as well. Then I had no other option but to go to London where my family used to live and work as a delivery writer. While working, I consumed a lot of online content during my deliveries, which allowed me to learn many new things. I worked long hours each week, which enabled me to spend two months working in London and then return to Egypt to continue my studies. But I didn't want to keep coming back to London to deliver food and disrupt my daily routine of seeking knowledge. I wanted to find something I was passionate about and loved doing. From all the content I consumed while delivering food, Amazon FBA appealed to me the most. So I started doing Amazon FBA. However, at the end of 2017, I got deported from Egypt. Uh, I'm currently in Spain right now. Barcelona just got deported from from Egypt. This left me very confused about my future. I didn't know what I was going to do and I had no money or way of earning money. As you can see here, I was telling the brother that I was so confused on my future and that I wanted to do translation, interpretation studies, and at the same time I wanted to go to Saudi and I wanted to fix the house in Senegal so I can rent it out and continue my studies and I wanted to memorize Quran. I was just all over the place. I didn't know what to do. It was a very stressful time and the lack of financial capability made it even more challenging. We stress here in the house, you know, it's cold outside so we stay the whole day in the house and I only go out in the night to work and uh, we are my mom's house. My father's coming tomorrow, my grandmother's here, my brother's here. You know, two kids, we sleep in the living room. It's just too much, man. And yeah, Amazon, inshallah, Amazon, inshallah, it will build up inshallah man inshallah it will be will be all right hopefully i can go to a hadith in mecca during that time i continued delivering food and worked on my amazon business whenever i had time as it was my main focus however living in a tight council apartment in the uk with my kids running around made it difficult to concentrate so i rented a part-time office in Vauxhall, london i would deliver food at times and work on the business at other times I was making some money with Amazon, but I had to rely on another brother to invest since I didn't have any money. So I started trying different things at the same time, mentoring people on Amazon business, exploring aff affiliate marketing, personal branding. One thing that I was doing a lot is pay for mentorship to learn social media marketing, sales from leaders like Iman Gaji, and even did multi-level marketing for about a month and a half. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mohammed. Um, I was born in Barcelona, grew up in Barcelona. When I was 14, I went to Paris. I was a basketball player, that was my, you know, my goal in life to become a basketball player. But when I was 16, I started my online business, dropshipping. I've done that for three years and I became uh, a student of Islamic knowledge. So I went to Egypt to study for five years. My goal right now is to memorize Quran. So, you know, I've just been uh, finding or looking for ways of passive income through Amazon FBA, through affiliate marketing. But again, none of these ventures truly excited me. In the multi-level marketing environment, for example, I had to avoid shaking hands with women, which made me uncomfortable. My heart wasn't at ease because my goal was always the same, to earn money, to seek knowledge. Little by little, I realized that I had learned many valuable business concepts that people were benefiting from. When Mamadou first contacted me, I had my reservations because I tried so many different things. Um, 
online magazines, Google, you know, you name it. And a lot of people had promised the world and, and, and hadn't delivered. Um, but I must say, I was pleasantly surprised. Mamadou really knows his stuff, and it's amazing what social media can do if you know what you're doing. In the first two weeks, I had 50 leads of new patients. So I decided to return to my original plan of teaching Arabic online, using the marketing, uh, sales, and business well, principles anyways, I had learned to promote my services. Uh, one of my goals as well for 2019 is to start a online Arabic academy. This way I could stay focused on knowledge while earning a living, benefiting both myself and others. I wish I could fully express how difficult these past eight years were, but the best I can do is show you this video I recorded at a very low moment when I was crying. I recorded it because I knew with full belief that what I was trying to build would work. My intention was always to seek knowledge and get closer to Allah and he blessed my efforts. The Arabic Teaching Institute I started in 2019 crossed six figures in its first six months and became a seven-figure business in 2023, making over a million in a year. In this video, I want to share how I achieved this, the lessons I learned, and how you can benefit financially from what I have built. As your brother Muhammad Al Andalusi, um, founder of AndalusInstitute.com, welcome to this video. This is one of those videos that took me a few days to put together. Um, there's a lot of beneficial information that I personally benefited a lot. And, and at certain points, even my heart got very soft from just reading the aqwal of the salaf that I'm about to read to you guys. Uh, all of the Salaf meaning sayings of the Salaf. Uh, so I'm very excited to deliver this video to you guys. Um, and so yeah, welcome to this video. Best online business to start as a beginner. If you are a Muslim, especially a student of knowledge. And uh, this is obviously my personal opinion based on my own experience. Now, so keep this in mind. I'm not saying at any point is the absolute, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I and mean, nothing else works, etc., etc. This is my personal opinion based on my experience. Everybody has different paths in life, but you know what I have experienced is what I can surely assure you that that works, and that I know how to how to you know um, how to do basically. Now I'm so uh, at one point in this video, there is going to be something popping up, a sign popping up on screen. And in there, there is going to be instructions for you to get free access to a module of our Earn While You Learn course, which is a course that I that I that I teach inside of Andrews Institute. Um, you might not be aware of this, but Andrews Institute now became more than just Arabic. The reason why is because, as you guys seen in the introduction, while I was in Egypt, I had to stop my studies and travel back to London to earn money, to go back. And I started doing this whole back and forth and my momentum became, you know, wasn't stable to the point of SubhanAllah, you know, I remember when I, when, before I started having financial problems when I was in Egypt, I was going to Haramain, which is a, a masjid where they memorize Quran. I had memorized 12 Jews there and then i started doing this whole back and forth and traveling and there was one little kid like from tajikistan or something like he he was nine years old his name was wahajuddin may allah bless him we started at the same time we had the same amount of memorization i left to london for a few months to work wallahi thumma wallahi when i came back and i will never forget this because it was such of it was a moment of it was a aha moment of of subhanallah like just a whole lot of things like time goes fast i felt like i wasted my time i felt like it, it just put me into perspective in life the thing was that once i came back from delivering food he had already completed the quran in just a few months, it just like it was like maybe like eight months or something like that. And not only that hurt me, it humbled me, and it made me realize that 
how important it was just your financial stability as a student of knowledge, as somebody that wants to study Islamic knowledge. And, and you might not be a student of knowledge. You might not want to give your whole life uh, to seek knowledge, but that's obviously my lifestyle. Now, I'm so try and like watch this video as in like, for example, if you just want to, I don't know, just be a, a regular, as they call them, nine to nine to five Muslim. And, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily want to memorize the Quran. I don't necessarily want to learn the Arabic language, etc. I would obviously, first of all, advise you as I would advise my sons to have high aspirations when it comes to seeking knowledge in your deen for the sake of Allah. But if you don't want to do that, you can still obviously benefit from these methods of earning money for the sake of freeing up time to have more time to raise your children, to have more time to, to, you know, to, to be with your wife or whatever it might be with your family, as we will see in a little bit, uh, the benefits of, of, uh, of, you know, running an online business. So this video is for people who are new to earning money online. And first, actually, before I forget, I wanted to mention something very important. That what I, the reason why I do this and the reason why I want you guys to pay attention to see the sign popping up at one point on the screen for you to catch the instructions to the free module. Um, obviously, I want you to watch the module and be impressed and say, oh, I want to join Andrew's Institute. And you don't necessarily have to want to learn Arabic. You can just join to learn how to earn money. Um, it's $99 per month, by the way, because I know a lot of people, they still think we own, you know, in the beginning, under the Institute was $2,000 one-time payment. So it's $99 a month. Um, so yeah, I want you to see this free module. And and I want you to, to say, oh, I want to join because, you know, I think this is beneficial. And that's why I want you to, I want to give you an incentive so you can focus throughout the video to make sure you pay attention because if you cannot pay attention throughout however long this video is going to be, it's probably going to be long. If you cannot pay attention and learn about these principles and these things that I'm about to teach you, you will probably not be successful at any of these, you know, financial endeavors. Because as, as you have seen in the introduction, it took me, it took me being able to delay gratification to do things without seeing the result on the moment right now on the spot and it took me a lot of content consumption i would sit for hours i'll be delivering food and i had two phones on my on my hand and i would watch videos on one and on the other one i would have the gps driving me to deliver food i had to watch i don't know how many hundreds of hours of educational videos on how to earn money. And if it wasn't because I was able to pay attention and pick information and digest it while I'm listening, all of this wouldn't, wouldn't be possible after the Tawfiq of Allah. So, so I want to, so I want to incentivize you paying attention with giving you a free module. Now, I'm, on top of that, if you watch the free module, you're going to be interested in joining the, the, the program, which you will obviously check on. You can check the links and stuff on, on the description, on the first comment, probably. Um, so, yeah, that's the reason why I do this. So, if you cannot pay attention for however long this video is going to be, then you might as well just, just click off right now. Um, so, who is this video for? Now, you might ask, first of all, people who are new to earning money online, right? The past few years, even before COVID, we have been hearing earning money online, earning money online, earning money online. You might have heard me. You might have seen the first, uh, you know, podcast episode that I did with, uh, with Faisal, Freshly Grounded, you know, talking about earning money, et cetera, et cetera. You have always known that you know, I had some something going on. Well, this video is probably the first one where I'm talking about earning money, apart from having spoken about inside of my of my Anders Institute. But uh, but yeah, if you if you are new about 
if you know the power of earning money online, but you don't know how, where to start, etc., this is definitely for you. Individuals with a large Muslim audience on social media looking for ways of monetizing it. If you are an individual, an influencer, somebody who has a big audience and your audience are Muslims, you can definitely benefit from this. We can definitely, you know, have a deal going on and I can have you start making um, money, inshallah, very quickly, actually, because you already have an audience and having an audience, having attention is an asset. It's for individuals well with an existing business, not knowing how to get better results. Now, I definitely think that you can benefit from some of these teachings for your, for your current business that you have going on or for your business idea as well. Uh, those who want to start a side business and eventually leave their regular job. Now, I'm so one comment that I've seen that, uh, that I asked you guys in the community, in a community post, there was, uh, I think it was a sister, she was saying how, how, um, how her parents or his parents, you know, are very skeptical about business, it's risky, uh, having a nine to five is more stable, it's less, you know, going for a degree is more, um, what's the word, secure, safe, but uh, we will see soon that, you know, that might not be the thing. But if you if you are scared of, you know, jumping on on uh, on the wagon of of business, this is definitely for you, because at one point I will I will show you how you can. Basically, little by little until you are comfortable enough of what you are making from this side hustle, then jump and, and you know, leave off your uh, your nine to five or leave off your studies once you have already because obviously once you start learning mon earning money through these is because you have already learned the skill so once you have the skill you are comfortable you know uh, this is the most valuable thing i have and this is why investing in yourself is always the best investment because now me at this time 2024 i have a skill that I generally feel that after the tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal, you drop me anywhere in the world and I'll figure it out and I'll set something going on that will bring me income because it's just knowledge. And, and as long as you learn the skill, as long as you take the time, it will stay with you for the rest of your life. So this is definitely for that type of individual. For students of knowledge not having much time in their hands because of studies, who want to support themselves. Naam, you studying in Egypt, you studying in Saudi, you studying in Mauritania, whatever, Turkey, you name it. You study, you studying, and obviously, like me, you don't want to go back and, and work a nine to five, and you know, you just want to earn money in a, in a way where you can be as busy as possible with your knowledge. This is definitely for you. Muslim women as well who want to earn money online without showing their faces. Now, uh, obviously, if it works for Muslim women, it will work for Muslim men who don't want to show their faces as well. But very often, you know, that's a problem with uh, with Niqabi sisters, stay at home, uh, stay at ho uh, home moms who want to, you know, either who are, you know, on their own or either who have a husband and but they want to have a little, a little some some going on on the side this is definitely for you people eager to learn the skills needed to make their first six-figure income this this uh, skill that we are going to talk about today is is a high value high valuable and high income producing skill so and is the skill that got me to my first six figures and eventually you know optimizing that skill it got me to seven figures so so it's definitely seven, seven figures in a year. So um, so it's definitely uh, for that type of individual. Those who want to work from anywhere using a, a laptop. Now, so if you want to have that nomad lifestyle, if you want to have location freedom, etc., this is definitely for you as well. All right, moving forward. So the contents of the video, these are the contents of the video. Um, we are going to talk about how to be sincere with wealth according to Islam and the proper, the proper, the proper approach to acquiring it. How to ensure that Allah gives you success, the perspective of wealth in Islam. Now, because a lot of Muslims, they have a bad, they have, um, a lot of Muslims just hate money for some reason. And anybody that talks about money is a scammer or, 
you know, or he's weird or love dunya, etc., etc., which fair enough, I understand where they might come from. You can talk about money in a way that comes across as you love the money, but, uh, but uh, you know, as Ibn Qayyim said, the money has to be in your hand and not in your heart. If that's the case, then uh, then money will definitely be a, you know, a, a it will definitely be a benefit for your akhirah. Nah? And, and a quote that I have lived by in those years where I was starting my businesses is that you cannot take money with you to the grave unless you spent it properly. Now, so if you spend your money in a way that helps you have more time to learn your deen, that helps you have more time to worship Allah, that helps you basically get closer to Allah because of that money, then you are definitely putting that money into your akhirah. So, so we're going to talk about the perspective of, of wealth in Islam. I got some marvelous aqwal from the Salaf. And I, I am so excited to, to, to share that with you guys. Um, the second chapter will be about why would you want to make money online as a Muslim? The most common businesses, naam, which are haram, halal, which have, uh, you know, doubt, some doubt in it. The best type of business to pursue based on your current situation or experience. And then the third chapter, I will talk to you guys about affiliate marketing, which is the, the you know, the, the model that I teach to my students and the model that I think is the, the most suitable for beginners. And, uh, you know, I will teach you about how it works, etc. How my, how much my students are making at the moment. And, um, and we will talk about a few things, uh, around that so first of all how to be sincere with wealth according to islam and the proper approach to acquiring it now how to be sincere in earning money and as you guys know the books of knowledge always start with the chapter of sincere intention now if you go to riyad salihain if you go to arbayin and nawawiyah if you go to sahil bukhari go to sahil muslim the first chapter will always be sincerity because without, without sincerity, your deeds are not accepted. Without sincerity, your deeds are not accepted. And every single deed that you do in this life should be a worship if you are a Muslim. So to earn money, you need to make it with sincere intentions. You need to make it an ibadah. And ibadah is not accepted unless you are sincere with it. So, I if you if you are interested in taking the 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 Arabic sources, you can pause and screenshot or or whatever it might be. I have all the sources from the books that I that I got them for, for uh, from, and I'm gonna read the English translation obviously because a lot of you you know don't know Arabic. Which, by the way, should be a motivation for you to uh, <laughs> to 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 learn Arabic and uh, and to join Anders Institute. Now, the first قول says a person will only be judged on the day of judgment based on what is in their heart. As Allah Almighty says, indeed, He is able to bring him back to life on the day when the secrets will be examined. The man will have no power or any helper. In Surah Tariq. This indicates that the innermost secrets, the true intentions and feelings of the heart will be revealed. As Allah, as Allah further states, does he not know that when the contents of the graves are scattered and the secrets of the hearts are made known, Thus, in the hereafter, both reward and punishment as well as the value of actions are determined by the state of the heart. And these are uh, Sheikh Ibn Thaymin commenting on Riyad Salihin, the book of Riyad Salihin. Conclusion of this qawl, the conclusion of this qawl is that whatever is deep in your heart, whatever you really want, like why do you really want this money? That's what Allah Azawajal is is judging you for. So if you deep inside 
want the money for other than pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal, we already starting with a problem. We already starting with a handicap. So the first thing is the intention. Ask yourself before starting this business, ask yourself before watching this video, why would I want to make, why would I want to make money? So now once we know that everything that is in our hearts is what we are going to be judged by. And that's what Allah will use as a miqyas, as a, as a measure to see if you deserve this money, if you deserve this rizq or not. And what proves this is this next ayah where Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَوْ بَسَطَ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ لِعِبَادِهِ لَبَغَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Now, I mean, if Allah had extended excessively provision for His servants, they would have committed tyranny. Meaning, if He gave them more than they need, He would have led them to oppression and tyranny against each other out of arrogance, boastfulness, etc. The third line that's highlighted says, So He enriches those who deserve wealth and give poverty to those that don't deserve it. Now, I mean, we'll see now who deserve wealth. How do you become like those who deserve it? So the last line that's, that's uh, highlighted uh, says, Indeed, amongst my, servers are, my servants are those for whom only wealth is suitable. And if I impoverish them, it would corrupt their religion. And among my servants are those for whom poverty is suitable. And if I enrich them, it will corrupt their religion. Naam, as, uh, as transmitted in a hadith. So the point is that if you, are, if you are in a state of need financially, or you are financially challenged, the first thing you need to do is to look at yourself. Am I being obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal? How is my religion? How is my relationship with Him? Not look at, oh, what is the next business move? What is the... That comes later. That's the asbab. That's the means. But the principle, the asas, the, the roots need to be there, which is your relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. Moving forward, the next qawl is from a dawad dawa by Ibn al-Qayyim. He says, indeed a servant is deprived of provision, of provision, of risk, due to a sin he commits. He says, he says, abandoning piety brings about poverty. A sin causes darkness in the face, darkness in the grave and the heart, weakness in the body, a reduction in provision, in risk, and disdain in the hearts of people, and hatred in be in between people. So as Ibn al-Qayyim explains here, the less submitted to Allah Azza wa you are, the less provision you are going to have. And this is why now moving forward to the next topic is how to ensure that Allah gives you success. How to ensure that Allah is on your side when it comes to risk. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Inna Allah la yughayiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayiru ma bi that Allah will never change his state or favor or favor a people until they change their own state of faith. Until you check yourself and you're responsible for and understand that كل نفس بما كسبت يعني, uh, that, that your state in this life is only because of what you have of what your hands have done. Yani you are responsible for your own state. And this ayah that I want to share with you right now, you know, subhanAllah, this ayah, uh, I memorized it here right now. I've been here in Mauritania for two, two months and almost three months, actually. And I memorized it here. This ayah, Allah, it put, it put tears in my eyes when I was about to memorize it. And the reason why is because I felt like Allah Azza wa was telling me something. And the way how it hit me, how it stuck with me, this ayah, and how much I will refer back to it when, for example, right now, teaching you guys, I know that Allah Azza wa you know, وَكُلُّ شَيْنْ عِنْدَهُ بِمِقْدَارِ Everything 
for Allah is based on, on a qadr. Naam. And the reason why is because the day before I decided, I prayed Salah Istikhara and I said, I'm closing my Instagram. Because I generally felt like my Instagram from time to time, it would be a cause of either uh, weak iman. And of course, cause of weak iman will cause you to, to fall into certain unnecessary things that you shouldn't be, shouldn't be involved with. Whether it's you catch yourself scrolling for hours, wasting your time, watching unnecessary things, your heart just becomes weak. So I generally, when I came to Mauritania and I, I gave time away for Quran, because since, as you guys seen in the introduction, since back then, my goal is always been to memorize the Quran because, I, because it, it generally changed me. It's, it generally, as Allah says, Oh, you people, there is a sort of guide and advice that has come to you and a healing for your hearts. I generally feel like Quran, the only happiest times in my life it's not last year that we made seven figures. It's not, um, you know, when with family. It's not when it's nothing of that. It's when I'm by myself in a room with the Quran open and I'm experiencing the meanings of it and being able to ponder on it and being able to sync it with my personal uh, experiences in life, etc. That's what gives me what raises my iman. And that's what generally makes me the happiest I've, I've ever been in my life. So when I memorize, going back to this, when I, was, when I decided to get rid of my Instagram for the sake of Allah, even though I had 70,000 plus followers, the account was verified. Um, you know, I had a, on average like close to a million accounts reach every month. And you used to bring about sales and money. But my heart wasn't at ease because from time to time, even though I'm, I'm very aware of like not being distracted by it and I have, you know, systems to not be distracted by my phone. There's always from time to time, whether I'm traveling, whether something, shaitan would, uh, would direct me to, to that, you know, would direct me to, to wasting my time, you know, with, uh, with Instagram. So I decided to get rid of, of it for Allah Azza wa Jal. Following the, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Minhu, whoever leaves something for Allah, Allah will give him something better. The day after, in the morning, I sit down, I open the Quran, I say, okay, what's the next page to memorize? And it was this one. So, so why did it touch me? This ayah is talking about Qawm Yunus. And Qawm Yunus, Amongst all the other aqwam, all the other nations of the different, all the other nations of the prophets, Qawm Yunus were a little different, as Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, because they are the only ones that Yunus, the prophet, came to them, told them to worship Allah, or they are going to be punished. They disbelieved. Yunus disappeared. Then they got scared, they start worshiping Allah. And Allah, even though they had disbelieved and then believed, He accepted their repentance and you know made them made them successful in the dunya wal akhirah. So that's the only reason because that's the only difference. Because the rest of the aqwam, the rest of nations, like for example, uh, you know, Qawm Fir'aun, you know, he says, Hatta ida al gharaq qala when, when the water took Fir'aun and his people, he said, I, I believe now. I believe, I believe that there is only one worthy of worship, which is the one that uh, the people of Israel have believed in, yani the people of Musa. And then Allah says, Right now, you're going to believe that you see it, that you're about to die and you was before from those who brought corruption. And then he says, rather today we are going to make you an ayah 
for those who are going to come after you and we are going to you know to uh to to use you as a sign that if you disbelieve we are going to punish you so all nations were like that except for qaum yunus so this is what's special about about qaum yunus and allah says if only there there had been a society which believed before seeing the tournament and therefore benefited from its belief like the people of Jonah and Yunus, when they believed, we lifted from them the term of disgrace in this world and allowed them enjoyment for a while. Yani, yani Allah, Allah, Allah says that when the people of Yunus, they believed, Allah lifted from them, you know, that, uh, that stress in, in this dunya, gave them about their provision and gave them enjoyment until yawm al qiyamah now let's look at what the tafsir says what does the tafsir says about when they believed what does it mean in tafsir ibn kathir he says that when when yunus disappeared and they got and he got eaten according to some of the mufassirun by the hut and he spent according to some mufassirun 40 nights in the stomach of the hut allah inspired qaum yunus his people to repent and to turn to him. So they cried out to Allah Azzawajal, worshiping him for 40 nights. Everyone, the whole nation, they, they just started worshiping Allah Azzawajal for 40 nights. So that's what Ibn Kathir says that it means that when they believed, when they believed, meaning they started worshiping Allah Azzawajal with their action, with their limbs, they showed it. Now they took the means to worship Allah, they showed it. So when Allah saw their sincere repentance and remorse for what had happened, He removed the punishment from them after it had near. Yani after, after they had repented to Allah and showed that they were sincere by consecutively every single day for 40 nights worshipping Allah Allah saw that they were sincere and therefore he gave them enjoyment until the day of judgment. Moving forward, this is why you should, the conclusion of this is that you should show Allah Azza wa Jal that you are sincere in your talab for this risk, in your seeking of this provision. How are you going to show it? He knows what is in your heart. So you need to, yani, with persistence and consistence, show that you are sincere. And a good example of this, and But a good example is how Allah gave me the tawfiq of being when I was tested with financial challenges and I tried in the space of eight years, how many business models, as you guys seen in the intro, failed, got kicked out. That put me into some crazy sadness, confusion. I didn't know what to do. I was stressed out. I didn't have money to take care of my family. I was living with family. I was tested over and over and over and over. However, my intention was always to seek, to seek Allah Azzawajal's knowledge, to know more about Him. That was my intention why I wanted to have a business with location freedom and make money online. Because I wanted to use that money and that extra time that it would give me to worship Allah Azzawajal. So I was consistent over and over. I, I kept on failing. You know, there were times where I would cry because... You know, I, I owned money in 2018. I owed money to that brother that lent me money for Amazon. I owned him money because I messed up with one product. So I own I owned him like eight thousand uh, nine thousand dollars. So the whole year I was giving the money back. I didn't see my family for, for a year. I didn't see my kids for a year. So it was hard. It was hard. There were times I would just crash down and I would just I would just cry. I was like, man, like it's hard. But that's why I recorded myself because I, it was my emotions against my logic. My logic and my belief 
for Allah Azza wa Jal told me, have patience. My emotions were they were heavy. My nafs was pushing me, was telling me, yo, this is too much, man. Stop. I can't, I can't, I can't carry all this stress. So it was the nafs against my logic and against my intellect. And, and with the tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal, I was consistent. And and I showed I showed Allah Azza wa Jal that as soon as he started giving me money and giving me risk, I kept on showing him. It is still my intention to seek knowledge. It is still my intention to seek knowledge. It is still my intention to seek knowledge. And the more he gave me, the more I thanked him. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal says, لا إن شكرتم لا زيدنكم that that Allah Azza wa Jal if you thank him he will give you more but now if you get if you get more and you don't thank him through worship then then you are you are not being shakur you are not being thankful and the best thankfulness is through worship that's why the Prophet Aisha radiallahu anha Asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, aren't you forgiven already? Why are you praying until your feet are bleeding? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, akun abdan shakuran. Shouldn't I be a thankful servant? So this proves that thankfulness, the best thankfulness is through worship. So you should thank Allah Azza wa Jal every time He gives you, even if it's a little bit. So even in states where I was in the hardest challenges of my life, financially, which caused me to be challenging the rest of things in my life, I was still asking Allah Azza wa Jal, give me the tawfiq to go study. I just want to study. Now I'm so, so that's how you ensure that Allah Azza wa Jal gives you tawfiq in your seek in your seeking of provision. You need to be submitted to Allah Azza wa Jal, and if you make your intention that if you get this money. You are going to do something to get closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. If Allah Azza wa Jal sees the sincerity in your heart, He's the most fair one. He will not let you down. He will give you the tawfiq. Inshallah ta'ala. So, this is how you ensure that Allah gives you success. Moving forward to the perspective of wealth in Islam. Now, there is this book of this this, uh, this scholar, which I will let you guys know about in a little bit, he says the pursuit of earning a living is an obligation upon every Muslim, just as seeking knowledge is an obligation. He says as well, seeking to earn a living, now I'm according to a narration, according to a narration of the Prophet, seeking to earn a living after the obligatory prayer is a duty after a duty. And both are obligation, especially as a man. And this is Muhammad ibn al-Hasan al-Shaybani. We're not talking about no contemporary scholar or this is the companion of Abu Hanifa. This is from the earliest Salaf, from the golden generation of the scholars. He studied under Abu Hanifa, uh, Sufyan al-Thawri, al-Awza'i, traveled to Medina to learn from Malik ibn Anas. Naam, and he wrote a book called Al Kasb. He wrote a book called Al Kasb. Basically, earning money, how you make money. Now, so these quotes are from this book. But we, like I'm talking about, like this is the Salaf, and I don't understand. This is why the reason why I don't understand why so many Muslims have this this hate, hatred, and and they look at money as evil. You know, and they, I don't think anybody has, has put forth these to, <laughs> to the masses. I don't, like, I don't think people know about this book. So, so moving forward, this book says, our, fa our father Adam was the first to earn a living. As Allah said, do not let shaitan expel you from, from the garden, causing you to toil. He says that this means to work hard, to work hard to seek sustenance. And Mujahid, which is a Mufassir, he said about this ayah, which is Allah telling Adam, advising Adam, make sure Shaitan doesn't give, make you was was while you are here with your wife in Jannah, 
so you don't tashqa, yani so you don't become unhappy. Mujahid says that becoming unhappy here, it means you will not eat bread with oil until you work for it until death. Meaning, this is a, a, this is a form of punishment. Us being in this dunya and having to work for risk is a sort of punishment. Now, I mean, this is why the dunya is the prison of the believer and the jannah and the paradise of the disbeliever because he thinks he's living a good life. Now, and this brings me as well to, it's not all the time that Allah gives you money that is a, that is a blessing. Sometimes it's a punishment. So, you know, be careful with that as well. However, going back to what we were saying, Mujahid says that this is a sort of punishment. You being in, in dunya and having to work for your risk when in Jannah, لِكُلِّ نَفْسٍ مَا يَشْتَهِيهَا Every nafs will have what you desire. You just desire it and you have it. Naam? But in a dunya, we have to want it, then go and seek for, for the provision and it's tiring. Seeking money is tiring. Then he says, seeking lawful sustenance, according to the Prophet in this narration, is like striving in the battlefield. And whoever sleeps with the intention of seeking lawful earnings sleeps with their sins forgiven. Now, the Prophet, the Prophet here is comparing seeking provision as, as fighting for the cause of Allah, as doing jihad, as killing each other, getting cut, getting slaughtered, getting... So you see the... You see the, the the comparison, both are as hard to the point, to the point where Omar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said, to die between the two sides of my camel, seeking the bounty of Allah, meaning seeking risk, is more beloved to me than to be killed as a martyr in the cause of Allah. Do you imagine the, the level of, this is why, there's a lot of people don't understand how hard it is to earn money. And they expect results quickly, etc. This is, as Allah Azza wa compared it in the Quran as well, seeking money is as hard as jihad. And Abu Ibn Khattab, he says he rather, he rather die seeking money than in jihad. Knowing, you know, the, the, the big reward that is you know, dying as a martyr, defending the, the cause of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And, and he says, spend from the good things you have earned. Meaning, there is, there is an ayah that says, uh, min ma kasabtum. Naam? Spend from the good things you have earned. He says, it's not con conceivable to spend from what is earned without earning it first. Yani Muhammad Shaybani, the companion of Abu Hanifa, takes from this ayah when Allah tells you, spend from what you have earned. He is giving you an order. How are you going to spend from what you have earned? How are you going to spend from what you have earned if you haven't earned it first? Meaning that earning first is an obligation. Now, and then he says, what is necessary to establish worship and fulfill obli obli obligations becomes itself an obligation. Now, I mean, this, this is a, a principle of usul al-fiqh, which is that whatever brings you to the obligation is an obligation. And from amongst, from amongst these things, from, you know, based on this principle, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, he had the opinion that learning the Arabic language is an obligation. Because in order for you to understand the Quran and the Sunnah correctly, and fully, you need the Arabic language. And whatever brings you to the obligation is an obligation itself. Now, for example, salah is an obligation. So whatever brings you to it, like, like purification, will be an obligation. Now, and this obviously this this has been stated while the yani both are both are conditions for for the salah to be accepted. But some scholars they have the opinion 
like like here with Arabic being an obligation because it brings you to the obligation. Earning money is an obligation because if you don't have money, you won't be able to have strength to worship Allah. So it becomes an obligation as well. Now, moving forward, an Imam Shafi'i he says a seeker of knowledge of knowledge needs three qualities. The first is sufficient wealth. The second is a long life, healthy life, long life. And the third is intelligence. Now, I mean, I was, I was just telling yesterday um, my students at Anders Institute that this is why we have three core programs. So in Anders Institute, we have a, a, a blue check mark community. Blue check mark community is you get, you, get, you get a blue check in the community if you complete these three core programs successfully. And these three core programs are based on this. First is the earn while you learn, which if you guys pay attention in the video, at one point there's going to be instructions for you to have a free module about it, which teaches you how to earn money. Now, and then you have long life. You need a long life. You need to be healthy. So we have the second program, which is strength elegance, which everything about that has to do with fitness. Uh, and, you know, in my experience with, you know, being healthy, being fit and knowing how to eat, knowing how to, how to what workouts to do, but at the same time, in the context of, of the minimal al majhud, the minimum amount of effort that you put in. And the third thing is intelligence. So obviously you become intelligent by, by the way of learning about Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why um, Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Ya Yahya khud al kitab bi quwa wa atainahu al hukma sabiya. Because he took he says, Oh Yahya, take the book with, with strength. And so we gave him hukm, we gave him hikmah, we gave him intelligence, dhaka, we gave him wa'i, we gave him understanding. And he is a little child when he was a little child because he took the, the book biquwa. So the third uh, core program that we have is Islamic literacy. The principles that you need to know, the must know things as a Muslim that will give you intelligence, will, will allow you to know what you need to be studying in this, in this life. Now, so, so that's based on this. Moving forward, Al Imam Malik said as well, seeking knowledge is not suitable for a person in financial distress, nor for an arrogant wealthy person. And when he was asked, what's the best thing a servant can do? He said, seeking knowledge. Now I'm seeking knowledge about Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, it was heard from uh, Sufyan Thawri as well, one of the, of the Tabi'in, early, early predecessors of Al-Islam. He said, wealth in this era is a weapon. Naam is, is useful, is a weapon. And Ibn al-Jawzi, he, he, he reports, I heard Sufyan al say in the past, wealth was disliked. And even to be honest, in the present. But today is the shield of the believer. Until here, it was the perspective of Islam towards wealth, towards money. As you can see, money is not bad. Rather, it can be beneficial, but you need to make sure it's in your hand and not in your heart. So you don't get too attached to it, but rather you use it as means to become a better Muslim, to be better submitted to Allah Azza wa Jal. I hope you guys benefit uh, and we're going to go to the second chapter. Alhamdulillah. All right, moving forward to the second chapter. Second chapter, uh, the first topic we are going to talk about, why would you want to make money online as a Muslim? Now, I'm in, in basically focusing on the benefits. What are the benefits of working online? So, the first and most beneficial one, in my opinion, is location freedom. Now, I'm allows Muslims to choose where they live, aligning with the concept of hijrah, migration for the sake of Allah. And, um, you know, the, the scholars always use this ayah in the context of hijrah. Allah says in the Quran, talking about in the day of judgment, there's going to be people who are going to say, oh, I wasn't obedient because I used to live in this place and I couldn't, you know, I had this job, so I couldn't, I couldn't pray or I, ha I had this job, so I couldn't wear my hijab correctly or I had, yani they would, they, they won't, they won't take responsibility, but they would put the responsibility on their environment. And so. And so Allah says, we'll say to them, the day of judgment, wasn't, was Allah's earth not spacious enough for you to emigrate? It is they who will have hell as their home. What an evil destination. 
Now, I mean, the neighbors reside in, in places where practicing Islam freely is possible, basically. Now, so that's the main benefit, I would say, uh, in terms of working online. Second thing is flexibility and time management. So online work offers flexible hours, helping you to accommodate prayer times and religious obligations, especially if you run your own thing. Then you can obviously, you know, be self-employed and, and move however you want. Second thing is less time restriction compared to traditional jobs, allowing for better integration of worship and work. Second thing is avoiding fitna, temptation. Working from home minimizes exposure to potential temptations and distractions in the outside world. Al-Imam Malik, he said, he said to, one of his, to some of his companions, do not leave your house frequently except for a necessity and do not sit in a gathering from which you do not gain knowledge. Now, so it, it, it goes according to that. In general, in general, the Muslim, you know, should you should try to avoid being always in front of people like malls and living in the West. You might you might not feel it, but if you take time off and you go like to to the for, forest or you know you come to the desert here in Mauritania. Once you go back to the city or you go back to like busy places and you see you see too much, you see too much, you talk to mu too much people, you will see that it, that it has an effect to your heart. So in general, if you want mind clarity, especially if you're a student of knowledge, etc., you want to try and avoid these type of places as much as possible. So I think in my opinion, it aligns, it aligns with that. Um, it creates more, it creates a more controlled and spiritually, spiritually conducive environment. Now, I'm diverse opportunities. Now, I'm includes running a business, site hustles, or remote remote employment, all of which can be tailored to individual skills and interests. Like for example, us at Anders Institute, everybody works remotely. I'm here in Mauritania. We have people in Japan. We have people in in New York. We have people Atlanta. We have people in Morocco. We have people in Canada. We have people in some people, I don't even know where they are. And it's like, like 20 of us or something like that. The point is, you know, Nigeria, as long as they have Saudi, <laughs> as long as they have an internet connection and, you know, a laptop, you know, it's, they, they, can, they can do their job. So, so that's a big benefit as well. Opportunities for financial independence and growth. Now, I'm so... In general, if you run your own thing, like for example, affiliate marketing that I will tell you guys about today, that is scalable. You can make unlimited amount of money with it. It will depend on, on your efforts and the, time, the amount of time that you put in. Uh, potential challenges could be dependence on, rel on reliable internet access, which can vary by location. Now, I'm right now, for example, I kept having problems because of the internet being a little shaky. Uh, a personal a an anecdote or a story that happened to me here in Mauritania. Actually, they just put it back up, like literally yesterday or before yesterday. The internet, the data, there was only Wi-Fi. This is one of the reasons why I came to this hotel to record this for you guys. There was no data in the country for like over three weeks. So you go outside, you don't have no data. And there is only like, you know, official places like this one which I think they get the internet from Spain because I keep seeing ads on, on YouTube, uh, Spanish ads in Spanish. So I, I guess they get the internet from, from Spain. Uh, and, and so this was working here, but I remember this is the second time it happened in back in 2020 or so. I was living here in Mauritania for three years and the internet got cut off for two weeks as well. And at that time I was running ads. So I needed the ads to the point where I called my mom. The only thing that that worked was calling. There was no data. I didn't have no Wi-Fi. I called my mom and I said, get me a plane ticket for such and such. She got me the plane ticket. She just, she couldn't send me a message or an email. So she just told me, go to the airport. Your flight is leaving at this time. This is the flight number, etc., etc." I went to the airport here in Mauritania. They told me, we don't even have internet to go in the system and see if you're even part of the passengers and you don't have the boarding pass, so we can let you in. 
So I was stuck in Mauritania for like two weeks with no internet, no data, only being able to call. And, and that's it basically. So, so, you know, that's some of the potential challenges, but you know, this next time that I came to Mauritania, everything changed. Like they, they progress so much. There's so many new things. This hotel that I'm in right now, I consider it to be the best hotel in, in Mauritania. It wasn't here a couple, couple of years ago. And, uh, and so, yeah, and it, at this point, it's not much of a, of a challenge, to be honest. But, uh, but those are potential challenges, I guess. Now, and then overall benefit. The greatest advantage is the ability to practice Islam more fully and freely, integrating faith into daily life seamlessly. Seam, seamlessly. Now, moving to the, next, uh, to the next topic, which is the most common businesses you hear about, identifying which are halal, which are haram, and which have some doubt. Now, the ones that you hear the most, as I told you in the beginning, e-commerce, selling physical products through online stores or platforms like Amazon, eBay, or Etsy. So, that was actually the second, the second, yeah, Amazon was kind of like, um, the second type of business model that I tried. The first one was drop shipping. I'll tell you guys about it a little bit right now. But e-commerce is basically, um, there's many different ways of doing e-commerce. How I used to do it is private labeling. So I would look for winning products, for products that sell well on Amazon. I would find them a factory in China and I would tell them I want the same product but with a different branding. And I would just, you know, work a little bit the, the presentation of it have some nice pictures and put it on Amazon, trying to rank on the first page. So when people search for a headlamp, my product will pop up and, and I will get sales from that. So that's what I was doing. You know, you can do the same in, on eBay and many other websites, but Amazon is the biggest marketplace in the world. So, so that's what I was doing. Um, I would say with these, uh, the best thing is to build a brand. I know people who sold brands for, for millions. Uh, and so, yeah, the point is, E-commerce, very common. You know, if you have an audience, you can sell products to your audience. If you're an influencer, you can sell your own products, etc., etc. It's the, I would guess, the simplest way. One thing that I didn't like about it when I was doing Amazon FBA is the inventory, the physical aspect of it. You know, especially I remember there's a whole month of uh, the, for Christmas, uh, China don't work. So if you need inventory, you, the deliveries get longer. If COVID happens a some sort of COVID, DHL not working. So it was it was a headache to get more inventory. Plus, if you sell something, a lot of the margins needs to go back to inventory. So you, you have to keep on reinvesting until you get a healthy amount of profit. So that's the reason why I didn't like it, let alone the fact that uh, I had to invest initially. And as I told you guys in the beginning, I didn't have money myself, so I had to rely on someone else to invest, etc., etc. It was... It was kind of a kind of a, of a headache because of the physical aspect of it, and the and the, the profits. Then affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is basically promoting products or services of other companies and earning a commission of every sale or lead generated through your referral. We will talk about it this more as this is my preferred one for any beginner, uh, and we will talk about it in the in the next chapter. Then digital products, digital products, creating and selling digital goods like ebooks, online courses, software or digital art. This is, um, this, I mean, pretty much Anders Institute, for example, is a digital product. Now I'm an online course is a digital product, uh, a software, you can build an app, something like that. That's a digital product. And this is very lucrative because there is high percentages, right? You, you build it once. And you sell it over and over and over. You don't have to reinvest in the, in, in the inventory. You don't have to even invest to create the product initially either. Under this institute, I started it with, I, I just used to pay for the platform where I put it, the videos for the course, which was, I remember having a conversation with support and I told them, they said we will have to close it down. And I remember going back and forth with them, telling them I don't have uh, money at the moment, but I'm, you know, I'm building... I'm building this program and so on. And, and they say, okay, cool. We'll let you, we'll let you one or two months for free. And I was, I was so grateful. I was like, wow, that's it. I don't have to pay for anything. So, um, so yeah, digital products are lucrative. 
And uh and yeah, that was uh that's that's crazy. I mean, as I'm as I'm talking to you guys, it's bringing me back. So yeah, digital products, then subscription services, which could be a digital product that is in subscription service. Now I'm like, Andrew's Institute is a subscription base. You pay ninety nine dollars per month or nine hundred ninety seven per year. It could be any other thing, you know. Uh, but subscription services uh, is offering ongoing access to content, products, or services for a recurring fee. Streaming services, subscription boxes, or online membership sites could be as well, you know, marketing services. When I used to, to um, to do marketing for ch- chiropractors, as you guys see in the in the introduction, there was a guy, a Australian guy, that was a ch- chiropractor, and I used to to run ads for him and bring him leads. I used to bring him uh, customers, and so, and so he used to pay me. I think about. I can't remember, but I did a deal with him, but it was anything between 500 to 1,000 euros per month. And, and that was that, that was my services, right? So it could, be, it could be that. And that, for example, as well, you don't need an audience to start and, and you, can start, you can start for free. It just takes some effort in the beginning to start. And yeah, I used to do that because, uh, because I didn't have no money and I had to, to make money somehow. And again, as I said in the beginning, in the intro, I didn't like it. I didn't, um, I didn't like it much because I had to, you know, talk a certain way, wear a certain way. You have to deal with people you don't really want to deal with, at least me, myself. I didn't feel comfortable. That's why, that's why I stopped. But through the, pro- through the process, I've learned a lot. And that's why, you know, that's what I'm teaching you right now based on all of these experiences. Then we have freelancing and consulting, which... Which as, you know, like social media marketing could be considered as consulting. Teaching people Arabic could be considered as consulting as well. Now, a lot of th- things could be considered as consulting. Consulting would be basically an, a skill that you have and you consult people on it. Or you freelance for them. You do a service for them. So providing spe- 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 specialized services or advice on a project contract basis, such as writing, graphic design programming, or business consulting. This can be... It's very subjective. It could be a lot of things. Then you have drop shipping, selling products online without holding inventory. When a product is sold, it is shipped directly from a third party to the customer. Now, I used to do this when I was 16, actually, and I used to live in France. And this was kind of like my first, this was the first time I realized you can make money and you don't really have to go to school. Because we were, we were like 16 and we were making like a few hundreds. And I was like, yo, this is, this is the first time I touched money in my life. And what we had, it was, I remember somebody in my neighborhood in France, he had this contact with some Chinese dude in, in China that used to work at a factory. And it was fake shoes, but they looked super real. Nikes, Jordans, all those shoes that people liked at that time. So we used to buy them from him for $30. And we used to sell them at school and our, our people for around 60, 70. So at that time, I, would, I wouldn't save the money. I would actually take the 60 euros from, from the people and I would send it to the Chinese guy and I would tell him with the profit, that would be profit, I would just buy shoes for myself. And at one point, when I was like 16, 17, I had like 20 pairs of Nikes and Jordans in the house. And I remember, subhanAllah, when I started practicing, I got r- rid of all of them. And, and for some reason... I, I got rid of it because it, it just reminded me of, uh, of my jahiliya for some reason. And I remember people telling me, why are you getting rid of it? That's not even haram and this and that. And I was like, I just, I just want to get rid of it. It's, it's like my past. I want to get rid of everything that has to do with my past. But yeah, that was, um, that was my first business. But obviously it's different. Right now on, online... Is that same concept of taking money from the people and then going to the provider and giving it to them, but it was is done online, right? We will talk about some of the shubhat around this business model, but uh, but that's what I used to do and that's what drop shipping is. And so this allows you to basically just focus on the marketing. It's not too different, like affiliate. It's not too different of, a, it's not too too far away from affiliate marketing to be honest. But it's a little different. But you have to just basically focus on the marketing and get the money, send it to the guy and 
or to the company, whatever it might be, and they send it to you. And to be honest with you, a lot of websites do this. Like even on Amazon, you will buy stuff and they will charge you, but it's not even them that have the products. It's the actual client, a, you know, a, pr a private seller or whatever it might be. If you go as well to, you know, to, to in the UK, Asda, Sainsbury, in the, in the US, Walmart, etc., you might buy something online. They don't even have it in stock, but they might send it from the third party supplier or whatever it might be. So it's very, it's very common. Then you have online advertisement like social media marketing, SMMA, um, you know, earning revenue by displaying ads on a website, blog or app, typically through networks like, like Google AdSense. It could, this could be having a YouTube channel, to be honest, or it could be having a website and charging people to put ads on. You might have a website that provides a website that, that, uh, that talks to a specific audience, let's say Muslims. And so now there is, um, there is Islamic clothing brands. There is, um, you know, I don't know, Muslim coaches that pay you to show these audience ads, right? A picture or an email, whatever it might be. So it could be, it could be, um, you know, online advertisement with these, um, it's free to start. Like for example, a YouTube channel, you know, you can start a YouTube channel, it will take some time, but, um, but eventually it will pick up and you could do it for free. So this could be a, a you know, a business that you start uh, for free with no, with no uh, initial capital. Print on demand is close to, to drop shipping. You basically sell custom design products like t-shirts, mugs, and, post and posters. So basically what you do is, uh, is a website and somebody will go to the website and they will say, I want a t-shirt that says this. And then, you know, you are the website. People come to you. They say what they want and you send it to a provider and the provider sends it to them. That's basically what print on demand is. And then influencer marketing is basically having, being an influencer, having an audience and brands paying you to talk about their products, to talk about whatever it might be on your platform because you have eyes, you have an audience that, that listen to you and that trust you. And then software as a service. Now, I'm this, this is not too far from subscription services and consulting could be the same. Software as a service. Um, this, this, this could be like something like any software that you might pay for, like, um, I don't know, is a common software that people use, but basically, I don't know, Google Drive. Google Drive is a software it's for free in the beginning, but if you want more storage to save whatever files, then you have to pay a fee to use that software, right? So, so that's what it would be. Now, even YouTube Pro is a software that you just pay to not see ads, for example. Now, so these are the common, uh, the common business models. Now, these are the doubtful ones. Now, to be honest with you, any one, any, any of these business model could be haram anyways, right? Because at the end of the day, there are principles. If what you are selling is haram, then obviously the whole business model is haram then. Now, if, you, if you're going to do e-commerce, but you are selling drugs on, online, then of course that's haram, right? And so, and so the three ones that I have highlighted, they are very commonly um, spoken about in terms of like, are they haram, are they haram? Haram. Digital products, to be honest, I just highlighted this one because there is a lot of con controversy around it. There is a lot of people calling people scammers online because they have online courses and things like that. And I do understand what they say it because there's a lot of people who hasten uh, towards selling a course when they themselves, they haven't mastered that skill yet. And I'm going to say you have to master a skill to sell a course, but it's fine for them to do it. That, yani I, I'm cool with them doing it, but they need to know that they need to be honest. Basically, a lot of them, they to in order to to sell to sell the, the course, they they uh, they present themselves in a way that they are not. And then and, you know, it, it just for somebody who's been, uh, you know, selling digital products for, for, for a long time. I look at myself in the beginning and and I cringe. So is a is a beginner, a beginner mistake that a lot of online online gurus, online course course sellers do, 
which is thinking that they have to, to fake it until they make it. And so it comes across very scammy, uh, you know, especially on the online, making money online. Oh, my God. You know, like the whole, the whole, um, I remember there was this, this guy that I used to follow, Alex Becker. And I learned a lot from him. He, he just sold his company, Hyros.com, last year for $110 million. And, and basically, he used to, in the beginning, when I, used to, when I started following him, he used to have this setup with a Lamborghini in the back. And he said he's not even for, like, I don't even use it. It's just for marketing. And so a lot of people in the online, making money online. And at one point, he changed completely. Like, he... He went into like real business, real business minded person, got rid of the Lambo and, and things like that. So a lot of people in the beginning, they do this mistake. They, they you know, they take pictures on, on, jet, on jets and, and, you know, some of them parties and basically things that people perceive as, as high value and as like, oh, wow, they got money, you know, cars, supercars and things like that. And, and it comes across scammy. Right. So so it messes up their brand instead of just being honest and being open and and uh, and yeah. So digital products, that's why it has a bad reputation. Online courses, because a lot of people, they sell they sell smoke, as they say. Nah. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't I don't uh, what's the word? I don't look down upon online course. I mean, Anders Institute is an online course. But what I'm saying is um, I've benefited even from those who had market me in that scammy way, right? At the end of the day, I was like, it's, it's an investment. I will learn something. I will learn something. And, and one thing that I was doing a lot is when I would buy a course, instead of just listening to the content, I would look at, I would look at the person as well. Like, what is his intent, right, behind me, him teaching me this? And, and I would look very deep in, in the people, like, like pass through their words, if that makes sense, right? To see what is the real benefit they're getting from these. And so that's how, uh, that's how I would buy online courses. And it's always a good investment. You always learn something, to be honest. Then drop shipping and print on demand. Um, this has a shubha. There, it has a shubha around it because... There is a principle in Islam when it comes to selling and buying that you cannot sell. You cannot sell basically the fish that is in the sea. You cannot sell what is not in your possession. And so drop shipping, um, you are doing the marketing. And once you get the money, then you, you go get the, 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 you know, the actual item. And so based on that, there's some scholars that, you know, based on that, explanation they say oh no it's haram but uh from my research and from my um uh you know talking to to people of knowledge uh based on the fact that in al bay al shira is everything based on al ittifaq now when it comes to selling and buying in islam is everything based on ittifaq everything based on the the buyer agreeing what the seller is offering and then idha tammat al safaqah if they shake hands on it, then, then uh, you know, with a few other conditions, obviously, that, you know, the, the item and making sure there is no aib that is hidden and things like that, then the sale is, is halal. And so, and so based on my humble research, drop shipping and print on, the, on demand, as long as, you put, as long as you are honest and open about it and you let people know somehow, whether it's on your policy on your website, whether it's on on, you know, somewhere, somewhere that is reachable for the public, they would know where these items come from. Now, don't, don't, Lani, don't, don't hide it. But, but to be honest, it will be very hard to, to, uh, to make this haram uh, because, because sometimes, for example, if you're selling on Amazon and you have 2,000 pieces of inventory, and you send them to, and you send them to, to uh, directly to Amazon for them to fulfill them. You won't see those items. 
Naam, and, and you can say, okay, well, it's in your possession because you bought them. But, uh, but the same thing if you were to do drop shipping, you might have a contract with, with a, a partner. You tell them, look, uh, I will bring you customers. You give me this, this percentage and you deliver the, you fulfill the, the item to them. It doesn't become, it doesn't become too different than, than sending those inventories to, um, to, uh, to the Mahzan, to, to Amazon. So in my humble opinion, and obviously I push you guys to, if you want to do this, to go and actually speak about your personal situation and what your personal, uh, you know, your personal business would be, talk to the people of knowledge, ask them about it, you know, present to them you, how your business is so they tell you if it's, if it's halal or, or not. <clears throat> but these are the businesses that have a little bit of shuba around it. So, of course, if you want to be safe, then then just go ahead and and just do the ones that don't have chuba. Tamam. Now, business models that require investment or skills that I personally don't recommend for beginners, like trading, for example, investing in real estate, even though you can you can you can be into real estate. Let me not sound as an ignorant for those real estate gurus. You can do real estate without an investment. OK, I get it. Me personally, I don't think. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner. I'm not saying it's impossible. You could actually learn the skill of being a being a, a broker. Um, you know, sales. You you could learn sales. You it's very possible. You can. You know, I'm not saying these don't work. I'm just saying me personally, how I feel, I wouldn't do it. You know, even though if you do trading, if you do trading, you will learn, of course, a a skill. Uh, investing in retail real estate, you will learn a skill, peer-to-peer -peer lending, all of this stuff, cryptocurrency investment, buying and selling domain names, equity crowdfunding, online business acquisition, all of these types, in my humble opinion, you don't learn how to run a business. You don't learn uh, operations. You don't learn, you don't learn the principles of business sales and marketing. Now, I'm as I would like to, not absolutely, okay, not, not, uh, you can still learn sales and marketing with real estate, you can still learn sales and marketing if you are in the niche of trading, etc, etc, but as an, as, you know, as a, as a business model, you will be focusing more on other things and other skills than actual business, uh, than actual sales and marketing, which are the main business principles in my humble opinion now i'm i'm not you know uh as long as it's not haram like um like uh you know things that uh that involves riba and things like that uh, yeah and you are free to to try you will always learn something nothing is a nothing is a lost when it comes to 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 doing things but i wouldn't recommend this now, the best type of business to pursue based on your current situation and experience. Now, for me, uh, I think that there's two types of, um, of individuals. There's those who have skills. Now, I'm on the right side. And those who don't have skills, a complete beginner, which could be a lot of you guys. Now, if you're a, a, an individual that has a skill, if you have a skill, you can monetize it. Now you could, you could consult people. You could, uh, you could teach people. And a a, bit, a good example is certain certain brothers that I have met through these through these years. After I was successful with my Andrews Institute, with my Arabic Institute, they knew Arabic as well. So, so I told them, I mean, you already have a skill. Just teach people. Just teach people Arabic. But in an actual like organization, like start an actual organization. And I, and I, it wasn't even anything official. Like I didn't have a course or anything like that. But I just, you know, lead them, led them to what they were supposed to be focusing on. And Alhamdulillah, the results were great. You know, there's a brother in five figures, in, in nine days, he did five figures. Um, this was another brother, Ismail Bimur Rahimahullah. I was in touch with him back in 2020. And uh, 
And I went to his house and we sat down and he he's a, a, an old head when it comes to imagine when when I started practicing, it was the a big cause was him. He was already in Medina. So he was he he's an old head when it comes to online teaching on Arabic online. However, you know, Allah gave me some insight that that he didn't give him. So we just sat down and, you know, we shared experiences and so on at his house. And I gave him a few nasa'ih and, uh, and, um, and yeah, just push him to do a few things. And then he messaged me, you know, a few in the upcoming weeks and so on. So he had, uh, I think he told me that the most he did, even though he was teaching for a long time, the most he did it was 7,000. So I told him, okay, do this, do that, do this. And, and alhamdulillah, he grew to 10,000, as you can see on the second picture, and then 21,000 plus. So, um, so yeah, I saw that he wasn't doing certain things that he could do. And, and alhamdulillah, Allah, you know, Allah get, put barakah in his, in his, uh, in his, uh, in his institute that he had. And, um, and yeah, man, rahimahullah, just, um, yeah, man, he touched me a lot when he passed away. Wallahi. He touched me a lot. And, and I asked Allah to, to keep his family under his uh, hevod. He left a daughter as well that has uh, Down syndrome, just like my brother had, rahimahullah. And so I asked to, uh, Allah to bless her as well. So yeah, man. It's, uh, it's sad, but, um, but Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, this was the situation with, uh, with Ismail. And then uh, another brother as well that you guys might, might, might have seen around is Brother Abdurrahman. Brother Abdurrahman, he was working in, in Mecca for 10 years. He's a graduate in Umul Qura and so on. So I saw he had the skills well, of, of Arabic. And so, um, and so, you know, I told him, well, just monetize it. And oh, I don't remember if I told him to monetize it, but I, I mean, to go with Arabic. But the point is, I shared with him how my Arabic institute was. And then he said, oh, what about if I start open an Arabic institute? Because this is the thing. Every time I met, I met brothers that know Arabic, uh, it, they obviously feel a little, a little weird of like, starting an institute themselves but what you guys if you're watching this and you know arabic you need to understand that just as i told abdurrahman your your students some students will prefer to 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 study with you because of your personality because of who you are your brand is attached to you personally and naturally some people will like you and they don't and they won't like me and some people will like me and they won't like you it's not much about like you know, even if, if, how many Arabic institutes there is online? It's too many. Andrew's Institute is a, it's just a little drop on a, on, in the bucket. And, and I would never reach all the billions of Muslims that there is in the world. So if you're watching this, you know, Arabic, well, that's a skill that you have, that you can monetize. If you are half of the Quran, that's a skill that you have. If you... If you even knowledge, you could start uh, an, uh, an institute about knowledge. You might know whatever it might be. You might know how to cut hair. You can teach how to cut hair. You might know how to... Um, the skills are, are countless. Point is, I met uh, Abdurrahman and he was working at that time. He was teaching English in, um, in, in Saudi. And at that time, he didn't even have Instagram. And then he started an Instagram. Alhamdulillah, he grew it. I would say that he was even a pioneer in uh or at least he he opened my eyes into the into a certain content that was working better than what I was doing, at least in terms of views. And um and you know he did his thing, alhamdulillah. And he started his institute. And and his institute was uh and his institute was um was profitable and successful. So he kindly recorded a uh a video testimonial uh, for, for, I guess, my advice. And I would like to share it with you guys. So, uh, so yeah, I'll be back after the testimonial.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my name is Alexis also known as Abd Rahman I'm the founder of Ijad Institute today I want to give a quick testimonial for Muhammad who has helped me tremendously on my path to become an entrepreneur um, prior to me prior to meeting Muhammad I was lecturing in university I had lectured for many years in Saudi Arabia in universities, colleges, private institutes. But I never really felt that this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I had many friends at the time who were likewise entrepreneurs. And I've, I had discussed with them various um, avenues that I could possibly go down to become um, in, you know, financially free or financially independent. Um, however, um, at that time, they hadn't materialized. Then I met Muhammad and quickly discovered that he had um, followed a certain system that um, brought about tremendous results. So I began to inquire further, how can I achieve similar results? What do I need to do? And Muhammad began to direct me and become somewhat a mentor for myself. Um, I began to follow his system. I began to take his advice, listen. Um, and I remember deciding what I wanted to do and what I needed to do and what skills I wanted to use um, and put into practice or to transfer into um, a profitable business. Then um, basically it got to a point where at the time now I'm on a summer holiday, we're on summer vacation. So I had to go back to work and I was indecisive. Shall I just quit my job or my exit one basket? Or shall I actually work for a little while, postpone it? You know, anxiety is real. So I remember speaking to Muhammad and he sent me a voice note that I'll never forget. I will never forget his voice note and I actually put it in my favorites. He said to me, Abdurrahman, what are you saying? you're never gonna work for anyone ever again. And he just said it in a way that just hit my heart. And I was like, you know what, you're right. That's it. I'm going for it. And Alhamdulillah, I handed in my resignation, handed in my resignation. And since that day, I've never gone back. I've never gone back, Alhamdulillah. And the results I achieved, and, and this is all from I will create it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me to meet this brother and put this brother in a certain place at a certain time for me to meet and uh, attain these results. So first of all, I'd like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is from our creator. And then secondly, I'd like to thank Muhammad for um, being um, more than just someone who's a mentor. More than that. Um, I've grown to love this this individual deeply. Um, he's someone that I believe that um, anyone who works with him will achieve, inshallah, God willing, uh, tremendous results. But they have to put in the work and they have to work hard. Um, um, any type of success is all, no doubt, from our Creator. But we have to take the means and we have to try hard. Um, he, you know, Muhammad um, is someone who has worked hard, extremely hard, sleepless nights, who has invested a lot of money, significant money, into various courses to get to where he, he is. And it comes with hard work. And anyone who has put that amount of effort into um, his craft um, will accumulate a lot of information and skills on the way. So that's the type of person that you would want to work with because they've got the experience, they've got the skills, they've invested time, money, blood, sweat and tears. And not only that, they've done it themselves by the will of our Creator, by the will of Allah, they've managed to attain that. So um, I recommend anyone to Muhammad one million percent, one million percent. I feel that anyone that works with him, inshallah, God willing, um, will see tremendous results and and results obviously um, what everyone wants so 
Alhamdulillah, all praise to Allah, I'm now able to do something I love, I love, and be rewarded for it. And now I'm in a position where I don't have to answer to a boss, I don't have to be bossed around, and my personality, I find, with my personality, I found it very hard to be under someone, very, very hard. And I'm now, Alhamdulillah, and, and all happiness is from our Creator, I'm now happy that, extremely happy that I'm in this position. It's not only benefited me, it's benefited my family and it's benefited a wider audience and a wider population because now I'm able to reach people and offer services to people who I couldn't reach before. You know, so this is a lot of a lot of benefit that has been um, you know, disseminated. Um and Alhamdulillah all praise to Allah. And anyone can make testimonials, you know. Anyone can say, Oh this is I did this and this but at the end of the day only certain testimonials come from the heart, and I say from the bottom of my heart that this thing has changed my life. It's changed my life, and I'm forever indebted to the brother Muhammad. May Allah bless him immensely. Um, I thank Allah SWT, obviously, first and foremost. We thank our Creator and our Lord and Sustainer, first and foremost. And But we have to thank, thank the creation. And um, this is someone that I couldn't thank enough. And up until today, I'm even thanking him. I'm always saying, Akhi, Barakallah Fiqh, may Allah bless you, may Allah bless you, may Allah bless you, because this thing has literally changed my life. So she changed my life, and I've got nothing but love and admiration, and my du'as and my supplications are always with the brother Muhammad. And I ask Allah that he blesses him and his family and his offspring, and, he, and give him the best of this life and the hereafter. And that's what I've got to say. If you want to get serious, take the leap of faith and just go for it. And just go for it. Just go for it. I feel so uncomfortable watching this. <laughs> but yeah, so uncomfortable in the sense that, uh, you know, it makes me shy. But yeah, brother, Abdul Rahman, uh, love him for the sake of Allah. So Allah and Jibari Kafihi. And, um, that's true from Allah, man. Uh, Allah sometimes uses you as a tool for people. And that's how I felt it was, to be honest. Because uh, I barely, I just, I just told him what to do. He's the one that, that, uh, that put the effort. I didn't have no course, no nothing. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, Muhim, um, with that being said, with the skill, you just have to to learn about sales and marketing. Now, once you have a skill, like Abdurrahman, for example, he knew Arabic, like Ismail, he knew Arabic, like other brothers that knew Arabic. You know, if you're a student of knowledge, if you, if you are half of the Akhi, man ta'allam al-Quran, khayrukum man ta'allam al-Quran wa'allama, just start the institute, ya Akhi. You know, if you have a skill, now, if you have a skill, you might be super good at Arabic calligraphy, you might be super good at whatever. You might be good at business. You know, teach people business. You might be good at, at um, whatever you might be. Whatever you are good at, you can teach that to people. Now, if you have a skill. So if you have a skill, these are the books I would recommend you to, to, uh, to read. These are books that I have read and, uh, you know, I learned a lot from them. Some of them you have to read them if you don't have much knowledge of Islam. You have to read them with a little... In general, as a Muslim, you should always be a little... Be careful. Naam. But, uh, but these are the books that benefited me. The main ones are the ones that are highlighted. You can screenshot this. And um, yes, expertsecrets.com secrets. Uh, and the one page marketing plan. These are like beginning, beginning. I didn't put here... Uh, think and grow rich, but that too. And then the rest are more like for later that are very beneficial to like maintain and scale. Nah, and it will benefit you in different aspects of life, to be honest. And these are the books. Whole year by myself, just working on myself, reading books. I read 12 books that year that changed my life. Yeah, these are, I'm talking about in 2018, I was in, uh, in Spain when I started thinking like heavy about business and stuff. And so these are, these are the books that I, that I read. Because a lot of people watch this episode 
four years ago and they, they kept asking about the books. Well, these are the books. A lot of people as well asked me who you learn from, etc., etc. So I will tell you today who to listen to online. If you have a skill, I'm talking about, yeah? If you have a skill and you are ready to, you know, to, to scale things and so on, to start a, a course and whatnot and console people and, and so on, my, my main guy... My main guy, man, like I him to Islam so we can party together in, uh, in Jannah is Sam Owens. Uh, Sam Owens is uh, an Australian entrepreneur. He, you know, he, um, he's the owner of a school.com right now or co-founder, I guess, after Hormozy bought it. And, um, and yet through the years, I've paid, uh, I've paid around 15000 dollars in mentorship with him and and i still want to go through some of his content uh but the content that that uh that i learned and applied and and my business took off took off it was uh it was through him yeah it was it was his content yani um so yeah sam ovens that's uh who i would advise to to listen to and then his co-founder, they just became co-founder. So when they, I, I used to like Sam Owens because he taught me, right? And then I started liking Hermosi because he was popping on, on social media. And so when they got together, I was super surprised. It's almost like, I was like, wow, that's, that's crazy that the two individuals that, um, that I, I liked in terms of business separately, they got together to build, they, to build a school.com. So, uh, so yeah, Hormozy, after I stopped at one point, once the business started working and so on, I stopped consuming business content for the purpose of implementation. Uh, and so, and so, you know, sometimes when I have time and so on, I like to watch, uh, stuff about business and stuff. So I watch, I watch Alex Hormozy. I bought his book as well. And, uh, I didn't completely read it, uh, all the way, but, uh, but it was beneficial. And it reminded me of a lot of the principles that I learned from, um, from Sam Ovens that I benefited in my early stages of business. Uh, and then, and then of course my guy, uh, Iman, Iman Gaji, Iman, I, so basically I, I heard about Sam Ovens through Iman and I think it was 2018. Uh, I was at Iman Gaji's house. He had like a mastermind thingy going on. And, and I remember him telling me at that time, because at that time he, he had maybe like 10,000 followers. I remember when he had his first personal brand program, uh, ignited or something like that. And he used to, he, he, he told me in a very like edifying Sam Ovens, he said, yeah, I was on the phone with Sam Owens and he was selling me and I was hyped and so on. And then I was like, this is what I'm telling you guys. And this is why I said who I used to watch closely is Iman Gaji. Because I, I follow his steps. I don't necessarily listen to him in terms of, I didn't necessarily, except for social media marketing, when I, when I, when I, when I tried social media marketing in the intro of the video when you guys saw that Australian chiropractor, when I started doing social media marketing, I learned from a course that I purchased from him, a Agency Accelerator or something like that. Or Incubator or... Point is, actually it was the initial one, the SMMA, six-figure SMMA or something like that. Anyways, the point is, um, now I learned social media marketing, I tried it, I didn't like it for myself, it didn't align with me wanting to seek knowledge, etc., etc. However, like I said, I watch Iman Gaji closely because uh, I like the moves he does in terms of business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I wouldn't necessarily tell you to listen to him based on my, you know, based on what I want to advise you today to do. Because obviously he's into, you know, social media marketing. He's into, now he opened a few uh, different courses about e-commerce and dropshipping and so on. I'm not saying you're not going to benefit. Like I told you earlier, um, Investing in yourself into learning, you will always learn something by investing into a course. You will always learn something. You might not end up going with that business model, but you will benefit. 
and you will learn something that maybe you won't necessarily, it's just like when you read a book. I, I remember when I used to read those books that I, that I recommended you. After reading the book, I don't necessarily like know, okay, I'm going to do this now, but those principles stay in my mind. Now, I mean, it's just like seeking Islamic knowledge as well. You read, you read, you read, and certain things you don't realize, but it's building a shield for your Iman. Now, I mean, even if you are not able to recall the information or whatever it might be, certain things, it hits you in a way that you benefit from it later on. So you will always benefit from investing into, into courses, online courses, mentorship, etc. But I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily uh, advise you to watch, to watch him. He's a very good marketer as well. So he'll probably sell you something. Uh, I'm not saying there's no benefit in what he's selling, but... Um, but yeah, personally, uh, I would say just go to the source, you know, even though even though Iman right now, he would say I, I used to make money already when I when I when I started listening to Sam Owens and so on. But I, I saw in his eyes and his house that he was praising Sam Owens. I was like, I want to go to the source. I want to go to Kibar al-Ulama instead of the Tullab al-Ilm at that time, even though right now Iman became became very big. And so that's why I'm telling you, I watch him very closely. I love his uh, launching strategies, you know, and, and as I said here, I paid, I paid for, his, uh, for his services, for his ads. He, you know, his agency was running the ads of Anders Institute for two years. And, um, and, and, you know, and then I kept close relationship with, uh, with even his employees for the next two years and so on. Point is, um, Nami Mangaji. Uh, these are the Sam Owens and Iman Gaji with, you know, a little bit of Alex Becker here and whatnot. Are the people that I used to watch very closely and I would learn from them and then like put it into my own niche, into my own Arabic. And, uh, and yeah, man, if Iman ever watches this, just holla at your people, man. Holla at your people. I didn't talk to him for a long time. He became too Hollywood now. But... uh. But yeah, man, I generally have a lot of love for Iman. I know he considers himself as a, as a Muslim. So for that reason, I love him for the sake of Allah. I want only good for him. And, um, and yeah, in general, I just, uh, I, just, I just love him as an individual and especially as, a, as an entrepreneur. You know, you can learn a lot of things from him and, uh, and benefit a lot from his journey and his consistency, his perseverance perseverance, pers perseverance, uh, you know, relentless into what he does, etc., etc. And a lot of things I do relate um, with him a lot when it comes to like, when he talks about feeling alone and all his depressions and stuff like that. I feel like that hits me very deep because uh, I think all entrepreneurs, we go through this and there are certain things that I know he says sometimes that a lot of people don't understand and, and, uh, and I identify with it. Like, you know, all those videos that I showed you in the beginning of me crying and, and you know, if it wasn't because of Islam, I probably would have dropped. I would, like, yeah, I would have probably stopped or I would have probably, it's very easy to fall into depression when you, when you're doing, when you're doing business, when you, when you run a business. And, and as we seen in the beginning, Allah Azza wa Jal compared it in the Quran, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam compared it. And Umar ibn Khattab compared it with, with just fighting for the sake of Allah, like just war, jihad, and, and running a business is, is a, you know, is a, is a, Allah mentioned it in, in the same, in the same, uh, you know, in the same, uh, in the same ayah. And so, um, and so, yeah, that's why I have a very emotional connection with Iman, I guess. Uh, even though it's not reciprocal, reciprocal but, uh, but I've benefited a lot from him and just watching him, etc., etc. So yeah, Iman Gajah, I would uh, definitely recommend you to, to watch what he does online, his, uh, his marketing moves, etc., etc., very closely. Now, moving into if you don't have a skill. Now, if you don't have a skill, I would recommend you to do affiliate marketing. And this brings us to the last chapter. All right, third and last chapter. Let me know in the comments if you're still watching until here. I would be surprised if uh, there's definitely going to be a minority that are actually interested in like 
serious about it but most people most people وما اكثر وما اكثر الناس ولا حرصت بمؤمنين as Allah Azza wa Jal says uh, that a lot of even if you want it to most of the people won't believe O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so the majority most of the times they never are able to to uh, to be serious about serious things moving forward third chapter why affiliate marketing is suitable for most beginners how affiliate marketing actually works. quickly annoying ad if at any point in the video you say okay muhammad i don't have time to watch this video i just want to watch the implementation content that you have in your program about how to earn this money then go ahead and click the link in the description and sign up to Anders Institute as if you wanted to learn Arabic. Even if you don't want to learn Arabic, just sign up as if you wanted to learn Arabic and focus on the Earn While You Learn program, which is the program where I teach how to basically earn money online. Works. How much money you can potentially make per month and the time frame to expect results, the amount of work required, actual results from people who are making money and our students, and different ways of doing affiliate marketing and free, ide free ideas that we are going to, to talk about. All right, so first of all, let's talk about why affiliate marketing is, is, is good for beginners. First, there is no initial capital or that is required to start. You don't have to buy inventory, products, anything like that. You can acquire a skill that is both highly valuable and profitable. Through the skill, through, through learning affiliate marketing, you learn, you learn sales, you learn marketing, you learn different principles and different skills that later on at one point you will see, oh, actually I can now build my own thing. So that's why I think uh, is, uh, is very beneficial because you are actually gaining a skill that you can then apply on so many different, in so many different ways. Now I'm then the potential for growth is unlimited. You can make unlimited amounts of money because Basically, for example, in our in our institute, right? So students who promote Anders Institute, who have an affiliate link, new students they pay ninety nine dollars per month, right? So students who promote the institute at the moment, right now, they're getting twenty percent uh, on on the on the fee that students that come through them get on a monthly basis. So as long as those students are paying on a monthly basis. The student that refer him is getting paid from his commission. The other student doesn't get charged more, but he is getting a commission on a monthly basis. So we give him a cut just for the effort of having uh, brought new new students, right? So so I mean it's unlimited because you can just like we as as the institute from our own efforts we have enrolled three thousand plus students, you know across the years. An affiliate marketer can, you know, it's based on your efforts. You can, you can refer 10, like you can refer 20, like 50, like 500, 1,000. It depends on how much you, you want to scale this. Now, you can choose to do this either publicly or anony anony anonymously. So it's good for, for sisters, for example, niqabis who don't, don't want to be out there. It's good for brothers who don't want to be out there. It's good for introverts who just want to be behind the, the laptop, etc. Um, you are not starting from scratch. This method has already proven successfully. Now, so in our case, in most cases of affiliate products that affiliate marketers promote, you're promoting something that people are already selling, right? You're not trying to sell. You're not trying to start a new business, see if this product is going to sell or not. For example, with Anders Institute, we have been profitable for five years we already have a proof of concept and only 3.8 percent of of businesses in the world get to the point of getting a proof a proof of concept meaning a meaning a product market fit finding a product that has a market that actually buys now so only 3.8 percent of businesses achieve that out of 333,000 businesses in the world uh, out of 333,000 million uh, businesses in the world, only 3.8% achieve that. So, so, um, so yeah, that's that.
so you're not reinventing anything. It can be very passive at one point. Once you once you have set the principles, you can basically just sit down and relax, sit back and relax. You can outsource it. You know, you can you can it can be very passive where you are barely doing anything. After you get your cut, your job is done and you get paid monthly. You don't you don't have to deliver the the service. You are just promoting people. Once they join, you get your cut and you forget about them. Khalas, the business will take care of them as a customer. They will deliver the product and the service. So that's why it's good. And to be honest, even myself, many times I'm like, yo, if I ever get like burnt out with all these skills that I have gained, I would just disappear and just just build a, a, a an anonymous account and just promote a, a product that uh, that I know works and just get my commission and forget about, about everything. I have thought about this many, many times. So yeah, affiliate marketing is something I will go with if I if I had to start again from scratch, especially if I had to now stop running an actual business and and do something, uh, you know, and still earn money. I would do this because, uh, you know, to be honest with you, running under this institute is the tiring part. It's not. It's not. You know, marketing and bringing people is definitely that's the two main tasks: the marketing and the sales. And the delivering the product. The delivering the product is a day-to-day -day operation thing. You always have support inquiries. You always have questions. You always have... That's the hard part. As for the marketing, it's just once and that's it. Especially if it's a monthly subscription thing. You bring one person once and that's it. It's, it's, it's monthly income that's coming in. So you as a free marketer, you just have to focus on bringing the people in. That's it. Once they are in, you're getting your commission as long as they are happy. As long as the business are... Delivering good results for them. No. Uh, of course, one of the reasons why is because I teach it and it benefits me to help you succeed financially. So, so this is what I was saying in the beginning. This is in my personal opinion. Now, I mean, my personal opinion. And of course, by me telling you, it will benefit me as well. So you, I want to be completely honest to you about it. Because when you're on social media and you listen to all these people talking about how to make money online, et cetera, et cetera, you need to be aware that, that they, they will have a, some sort of bias because they will probably have a product to sell you, right? And most of the times, it's very hard to find somebody that is completely honest, like, you know, like, like all of these works, but, you know, that's what I teach. If you want to come with me, then, then, you know, pay me. There's most people they will tell you, no, this is the absolute best. The rest is crap. It don't work. This, that. So, so that's the reason why I wanted to put this in here. One of the reasons why I think affiliate marketing is the best, not only because I would do it, I have that bias, but as well, I have the bias that we have a program that we teach it. Now, I'm so, so obviously I want you to join. <laughs> and so that's why I'm telling you about affiliate marketing. But, uh, but you know, all the, other endeavors would work as well. But, you know, me as me personally, as a Talib and, uh, you know, as a Talib that uh, wants to, me personally, I don't like to go outside. I don't like social media marketing where you have to talk to people. I don't like e-commerce with physical inventories. I don't like, um, you know, drop shipping. I don't, I'm not passionate about selling head, headlamps like I used to sell. So with affiliate marketing, is like I can find a product that I like, that I actually believe in, that I might even use on a daily basis and just promote that for a cut for myself, you know? So, so that's the reason why. That's the reason why I told you I teach it and it helps me. It, it benefits me to help you succeed. All right, so moving to on how it actually works. How does affiliate marketing actually works? So affiliate marketing, as we've seen earlier, is promoting products or services of other companies and earning a commission for every sale. Or sometimes some companies, they just give you a, a commission for a lead generated now, through, through your referral. Now, this is how it would work. A business with a proof of concept, meaning with a product that actually sells, that, act, that has been proven for the past years that people are buy, buying. And the way how you prove that is, is the business, have the business been profitable? These past few years, okay, so they have a proof of concept. There's people that want to buy this product. And when they buy it, they are generally happy. Now, it's not a scam, basically. 
So, so, so once a business has a proof of concept, they have their own ways of income, right? And that's what the what the arrow signifies. They have their own their own ways of, of, of earning income. So Amazon, for example, being the largest marketplace online of of products, they have their own ways of earning income, right? They have their own sellers who sell Amazon products to the people. Now, so so it brings them more eyes. They have a, an actual already existing customer base. They have their website. So that's their own methods as Amazon. You know, they have employed people and they have built these income producing sources. So what an affiliate marketing, what an affiliate marketer is, is somebody that comes and reaches the people before they actually reach on their own the actual Amazon website, right? So whether it is through their own website that they have built, whether it is through whether it's through different marketing, different marketing uh, tactics, they will reach to the people or they will, they will tell the people that these products are existing so they buy it. Now, and in exchange of their efforts, they get a commission. So they go to the people, wherever they are, on social media, on websites, on Reddit, on, on you name it. They go and say, hey, why don't you buy from our website instead of going directly to Amazon.com? And then they will say, okay, for whatever reason, it could be because the presentation of that website was better. It could be because, you know, that website is behind an influencer that they trust. Whatever the reason is, they rather go through their website instead of going directly to Amazon, right? And so, and so then uh, the, the customer says, say, sure, why not? You know, I will buy from your website instead of going to Amazon.com directly. And so then what happens is the affiliate marketer, affiliate marketer gets a commission. And then it gets split in between Amazon and, and the affiliate marketer. So the affiliate marketer now, he has done his job. He has promoted the product. The customer bought it. And that's it. He's done with that customer. Now, I mean, now the, the, and now Amazon, they have to fulfill the product. They have to deal with refunds. They have to deal with all the business operations, which could be a pain many times. And so that's why I think that being an affiliate marketer is, uh, is very lucrative. Now, and it's not about taking away customers from the actual business, but rather helping the business get more customers or even getting to those customers before before the actual efforts of that business get to those customers. So, um, so of course, the affiliate marketer cannot have an affiliate link for himself unless the business allows it. Now, I mean, it's not like you, it's not like sneaky stuff where, where you're building, you know, fake, web, fake websites and stuff like that. It's not like that. There's an actual program you sign up for and, and they give you an affiliate link. Now, so, so in our case, in Anders Institute, we give you an affiliate link as well. We have an affiliate program that once you are inside of Anders Institute, you have access to. And, and for example, we have a main link, right? This is our main link, andersinstitute.com slash webinar, for example. Then when you create a, an affiliate account, you will get a sub link. And that sub link will be something like andersinstitute.com slash webinar and your name. And when someone clicks on your special link from their device, it's recorded. It's recorded for a whole year that the initial click came from your link. This means if they don't sign up right away, but come back later, even a month or two later, and even six and join using the same link, you will still get credit for the sale. Now I'm so, so once they click your link, it stays in the cookies. You see, you see on websites how it says, "Do you want to allow cookies?" That's what cookies are. Is 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 almost like a like a note that you have been there, right, from your device, and and so and so once the the affiliate marketers of Anders Institute they promote Anders Institute and people 
clicks on those links and, and they get interested and perhaps join two months later, then they get the commission still because they came from them. Uh, so, so the skill of an affiliate marketer is knowing how to put his unique link in front of people. The methods are hundreds and many different methods to put your links in front of people and in a way where they want to click and, and they actually buy. And so that's the skill of the affiliate marketer, which is essentially the skill of a business owner. Now I'm the, the thing that keeps the, the business going and brings about more people and more, more, more potential customers is marketing. So with affiliate marketing, you're learning that skill. So what happens is that now you're going to learn how to promote another product, but at one point you're going to be like, oh, wow, I can just figure out my own product and I will do this same skill that I learned, but for my own product. Now, I mean, that's how Anders Institute came about. That's why in the beginning I was telling you about all of these different venues that I, ventures that I did. At one point I was like, wait, so I'm doing this for other people. Why not do it for my own self? And so then I found my own product. I found my own team. I found my own, you know, my own marketing, my own sales for my product. So I can get, you know, the 100% the commission or profit for, for myself. But with affiliate, mar affiliate marketing, if you don't have a product, you start learning the skill, you promote another product. And, and on top of that, you, you don't need to, uh, yes, you get a, a smaller commission than if you were the owner of the, of the, of the, of the business, but you save, your, you save yourself the headache of actually delivering the product, which could be for month and month and month and month. You will have to respond to queries, to support, et cetera, et cetera. That's why I love, that's why I love uh, affiliate marketing. And so remember to keep a close eye clear, uh, and close attention to, so, so you can get a full module for free of our earn what you learn course. Now going into how much money you can potentially make per month and you know, the expectations for results and actual results that I want to show you from, from students who, who made money. So the key things to keep in mind is going back to the introduction, everyone's risk is written according to their relationship with Allah. Now I'm so it's, it's more than just, uh, Oh, in how long can I do this? It's, is your qadr. You need to first fix yourself. Naam, keep that in mind. Then as much effort as you put in, as much as you will collect. Then there is no limit of scal scalability. Now you can scale it as, as much as you want. And it's a game of numbers. It's a game of numbers because the more, the more people sees your link and the more people clicks on it, the more possibilities of getting affiliate commission. So here, for example, we have some numbers for the past three months at this, uh, you know, being July 2024 right now. So, so far, uh, these past three months, there was $10,000 uh, generated from our 111 promoters. Allahumma barik. And so there was 936 referrals, meaning emails, people who actually came through different affiliates. And, and this generated 34 paying customers, which is about a 3%, meaning that for each, for each 100 emails, there was about three new customers, right? So now you know, okay, so on average, 3% converts. So I just need to make sure if I want three customers that I show this link or that, that you know, 100 people joins through this link so I can get three customers. And three customers, if we are talking about, about for example, if students pay uh, 99 per month, well, if you get 20%, that would be like $20. So that's with just three customers, you're already making $60 per month. If you repeat that again, well, that's $120. If you repeat that again, well, that's $180. If you repeat that again, and just like that, and you keep on, you keep on building. And so it creates at one point a snowball effect where you can scale it to thousands. Now, so the expectations is really based on how consistent you are, how much you believe in it, how much you understand it, and how patient are you, are you capable of being. And so, and so, yeah, these are the numbers for the past three months. 
and uh, and these are the expectations. These are some of the promoter earnings. Now these are, I think is yeah for the past three months as well. So as you can see from the top on the right on the right side. On the right hand side. Uh, you have uh you know nine hundred thirteen six hundred and this was what was paid, what was paid to these promoters. Now, and so and so we just started, you know, three months ago, and so these are the expectations. Very very open to you about it, and and I'm excited to see in a few months. I took this specifically because, you know, in a few months, next year, inshallah. This will be crazy numbers, inshallah. So, so, uh, so yeah. This is the early stage. If you're, if you, if you want to learn this skill and join Anders Institute, and for me to teach you how to make affiliate commissions, then make sure you join right now. This is the beginning right now, and and the beginning of everything is always is always the best. Now, I'm the 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 secret of getting ahead is getting started. So the the sooner you start, the better. Now, the amount of work required in setting realistic expectations. Now, many, many of you, the first thing that asks, okay, but how much do I have to put in though? And so I want to remind you this. I wish I could fully express how difficult these past eight years were. But the best I can do is show you this video I recorded at a very low moment when I was crying. I recorded it because I knew with full belief that what I was trying to build would work. My intention was always to seek knowledge and get closer to Allah and he blessed my efforts. The Arabic Teaching Institute I started in 2019 crossed six figures in its first six months and became a seven-figure business in 2023, making over a million in a year. In this video, I want to share how I achieved this, the lessons I learned, and how you can benefit financially from what I have built. It wasn't easy for me. And what you are building, what you are building as an affiliate marketer is pretty much like a sub-brand. It's, it's almost like you're doing what I did again, but with my mentorship telling you, make sure you don't make these mistakes. And, and you don't have the, you don't have the, um, the risk of like, oh, maybe people won't buy it. It's already proven concept. People buys it. The only thing you need to do is this, 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 this. So it's literally like I'm laying it out for the students. Now, I mean, that's if you are interested in, in doing it in our affiliate program then marhaban, you are welcome. Now, remember that the efforts, as the Prophet ﷺ, we read earlier, seeking lawful sustenance is like striving in the battlefield. This is literally war. It's as hard as war. Like, sticking to it is the hardest part. It works. But who sticks on it is not many people. So... So seeking sustenance is like, like being at war. And whoever sleeps with the intention of seeking lawful earnings sleeps with their sins forgiven. The, uh, Umar ibn Khattab, he said that to die between the two sides of my camel seeking the bounty of Allah is more beloved to me than to be killed as a martyr in the cause of Allah. And then, as I was telling you guys earlier, this is the first time I'm showing you this, is the ayah where, where Umar ibn Khattab took this took this uh, call from because Allah Azawajal says we know yani, talking about difficult situations he he says he knows that some of you will be sick some of you will be traveling through the, through the land seeking Allah's bounty meaning doing business seeking seeking risk and some fighting in the cause of Allah these are the three hardest situations Allah Azawajal mentioned in this ayah some of you will be sick some of you will be fighting in war and some of you will be doing business i know that i know it's difficult so just do whatever you can and so allah is telling you that seeking risk is difficult already this is a a a, a sort of punishment as mujahid uh explained based on the ayah where allah just tells adam alayhi salam uh, make sure shaitan doesn't kick you out of paradise by doing what's worst, what's worst to you فتشقى. so you become unhappy Mujahid he said by by having to seek risk instead of being in Jannah and everything being given to you by just wanting it Naam? and so and so it's difficult have that expectation it's going to be difficult Naam? it works but it's not easy now let's talk about different ways of, of how doing affiliate marketing and free ideas 
So, so now hopefully, um, you know, and I wish we, we went more in depth, you know, in this video about how, how to do affiliate marketing, but the concept is that you're going to have a sublink. The more people see this sublink and the more people click this sub sublink, in the case of our institute, for example, an Arabic institute, as the more Muslims click this link and actually decide to learn Arabic, the more commissions you make, right? So the skill is to, to know where to put this link so as many people as possible gets it. Now, what I teach my students is how to, how to, create, how to create an audience, how to grow an audience. Now, uh, in the beginning, we were doing with my own content because it's already proven, you know, in the, la in the last three months, there was a student that, that grew an account to, uh, to 24,000. Now I'm 24,000 uh, subscribers. So it's already proven and people already like the content. I've, I've already tried it out. We have grown multiple accounts to all together accounting to like a million followers based on, on you know, Arabic content. So, so that already works. However, there is other ways on how to, how to build an audience, how to grow an audience. So let's look at some, some ideas, right? And uh, as we said, as we said, you know, that's the skill to put it in front of people. So you could create content online that's educational, how to guides, tutorials, webinars, entertaining, like humor, stories, podcasts, which is, which is, uh, in the beginning, the first highest, um, month of Anders Institute to like 70,000 70, when the average was like 15,000 when I was in Mauritania, it was because I, I don't know if, if some of you remember, I made a, a video, you know, joking about how Egyptians uh, talk to students of knowledge in Egypt and that went viral. And, and that month was, was, uh, it brought a whole lot of sales from, like I said, the average was 15,000 and so on around the, that time. And so that month was, uh, went up to, to 70,000. So, so yeah, it could be humor sometimes, no other times, but, but yeah, stories, podcasts, vlogs, informative, it could be news, reviews, interviews, uh, inspirational, motivational quotes, success stories, wellness tips, it could be quizzes, polls, live streams, Q and A sessions, infographics, testimonials, like social media posts, contents or promotional, like product launches, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm so, so there's a, there's a lot of content you can do on social media. That will, that will bring interest and people will be interested about. The point is to, you need to know what, what the business you are promoting is offering, right? So let's take as an example, Anders Institute. Anders Institute, you need to know who would be interested about this product, right? About learning the Arabic language, about just wanting to be a successful student of knowledge, wanting to, to just grow as a Muslim. Now I'm becoming independent, make money, get fit. That's what we, that's what we about in Anders Institute. Now I'm having tariqatuna. And so what type of content would these people watch? Well, if you're watching this, this is probably the type of content they will watch. Now I'm so, or, or how to be this, how to be that. Yeah, I and mean, you have to think what does these people that would click and become customers would watch and then create that content. No. So, for example, this is an example of a, of a, uh, of a, uh, of a, an account that is faceless, right? The merciful, merciful servant with 4.5 million subscribers. On average, they get, they get a bunch of thousand of, of, of views and, and they're very consistent and, and it's faceless. Like, is especially now with AI, you don't realize how easy it is to create content. Now, I mean, of course, all of this, I teach it inside of Earn While You Learn. But look at this. Eminem, or Slim Shady, has recently just released an album which is going viral. In his album, he has a song called Antichrist, which we Muslims refer to as Dajjal. Music is a tool used by shaitan to misguide the people. The Quran does not specifically refer to music itself, 
Some scholars, however, have interpreted the phrase idle talk, which is discouraged as including music. It was reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and elsewhere that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said that there would be among his ummah those who would allow zina, the wearing of silk, drinking of alcohol, and musical instruments. Let's hear a breakdown of the song by Eminem and its meanings from an ex-black magician who has now reverted to Islam. So on his new album, he just dropped a song titled Antichrist, and it is blowing me away the fact that they're just not even... So the point is, this is an interesting video. This was probably used with, to create the voice, something like 11 laps. Now I'm an AI generator voice over where you give the text and it creates a voiceover for you. Now, so you can just create the text with, with, uh, with chat GPT, with AI about a particular topic, touch it up a little bit, put your, your little sauce, put it into a voiceover, do the voiceover, then bring some st stock images, bring, bring some stock images, some stock videos from websites that offer this, find something interesting to, to, to talk about and beneficial. That will bring a certain, like this, this account, for example, is all Muslims. So this account, for example, if you make a video like this and then in, in the middle of the video or you make the video about knowledge and how important it is for you to learn. And then you talk about Arabic and then you say, click the link down below if you are interested of learn Arabic and then continue giving them the content. There's a, a big amount of people that will, that, will, uh, that will click. And as we said earlier, on average 10% that that uh, was interested becomes a um, a um, a customer, right? So if we go back to to the numbers, look for example at the uh, bottom right, and after bottom right, like nine days ago, eight days ago, from these fifty one thousand Muslims that watched this, maybe some didn't weren't Muslim, but fifty one thousand people. Do you really think that there is not going to be a small percentage that will click and actually be interested in learning the Arabic language when it's all Muslims watching this. That's, that's basically, that's basically, this is what I said earlier is a game of numbers. Now, I'm so if out of 51,000 people, just 1%, just 1%, just, just, let's say just 500 people clicks and, you know, are interested and give the email and you, and a 3% of those join, well, that's already that's already over over a hundred in commissions that you are that you are earning on a monthly basis from uh, from one video, and you just do that over and over and over and over, now, and and you as an affiliate marketer as well, what you could do is find accounts like this, because when you join Anders Institute and you create an affiliate link, you can actually create a sub link of your affiliate link. Like you can actually offer someone a commission. So if you get a 20%, you can tell him, look, I will give you a, I will give you a 10%. For example, we go half and half. Since you have the website already or the audience, you know, we'll go half and half. You get 10%, I get 10%. And, uh, and we try and bring as many people as possible. You could do that too. You don't have to build it from scratch. But obviously, if you build it from scratch, is a, you know, it builds up at one point. It gets it gets a lot of um, a lot of traction, and it's a snowball effect, and you get as more commission um, than uh, than that. Uh, in Andrews Institute as well, you get a ten percent, a twenty percent in the beginning, but then once you reach to a certain amount of 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 people that you have uh, promote that you have um, referred, your commission grows, and the top tier commi um, commission that you get is forty percent. So imagine now at one point, if you have done this long enough, you're going to be promoting to people and getting a 40%. So instead of 20, getting $20 per person, now you're getting $40 for each person per month that, uh, that joins. And that's if they go with the most common payment that uh, the students join under this institute. But there is as well the nine, 997 per year where, where the student saves some money. And so you will get a 40% of that as well, which is almost $400. So if only two people do that per month, well, like go with that, with that price, well, that's already $800 that you, that you got that month on top of your $100 per month commissions. 
So you see how you see how lucrative lucrative it could be, but it all goes down to consistency and knowing how to put this link in front of people. So this is an idea as well. This is an idea that you could do if you know someone that has a big large following. That's already a win. And this is why I said in the beginning, this is for for individuals who have an audience already. I could if they have an audience of Muslims, they could literally get an affiliate link from from uh, Andrews Institute and we can we can put together some sort of launch and and that's it that like from the first month they can be earning m monthly income already that's that's how powerful this is so Emmett so so you know humor as well sometimes can bring about eyes but the problem with humor is that it's not all the time going to be the people you are wanting to that the people that will actually be interested about learning. Now, so this, for example, I made this and it got, it got a lot of traction. It got like a lot of views, but from these views, like views, not always, um, it doesn't always mean more sales. Like you need to, to make sure you, you know, which views are those are views of people who were just entertained about that video or views of people who are, who would actually pay for a service that teaches them the language of the Quran. Now, so, so watch this video real quick. So, so you see, this gets a lot of views, but are those views going to convert into into customers? This, for example, an example of an anonymous like you, like you could create a, a a meme account on Instagram, for example, about Arabic only, and that would obviously attract people that are currently learning Arabic because those memes only those people understand the memes of learning Arabic. So these meme, for example, you got a lot of views, but as you can see on the top right, it got like 10,000 views. But the thing is, the people who are laughing, they have to understand. It's like an inside joke. You only understand if you learn Arabic. Yeah, that's that. Now, I wanted to show you the simple, how simple the content that got me to $10,000 a month and above that, how simple it was. It was this type of, uh, of interviews. That's how I started to get traction to, to, uh, to the Institute by interviewing individuals who had learned the Arabic language. So obviously, obviously it will attract individual, indiv individuals who want to be like them, who want to learn the Arabic language. And so while I was uh, doing the interview, at one point I would just plug, just like throughout this video, you, you, have, you have been seeing plugs. I was just plugging what I think they would be interested about. So in that case, it would be your the affiliate viewers. link. Uh, how I learned Arabic is basically, you know, episodes where I bring up, uh, you know, people who have successfully learned the Arabic language, most of them students of knowledge. Uh, and we basically explain you guys and share with you guys, you know, the process, how it was before, throughout, and, and how it is now. So that's what it is. Tune in, inshallah, subscribe if you want to see the, the rest of the episodes. And, uh, and yeah, let's get straight into it. So first of all, I want to ask Akhana uh, Hani. So you see, is that is that simple? There's no edit. I don't need no editing skills for this. I just need to to reach the people, convince them to do a video with me about learning Arabic, and then do a few things that I can teach you guys in terms of keywords and you know how to rank videos and how to get eyes to a video. Once you get a little bit of traction and people are actually interested. They, that will be a snowball effect. So for example, I, I, I see a student, for example, in Mauritania, or I see a student, for example, in Medina, or I see a student in Egypt, 
doing this, for example, the, because the simple fact that there's a whole lot of students there. The only thing you need to do is find students that have learned the Arabic language or are learning about the Arabic language and make your channel about, about interviewing students who are currently learning the Arabic language. And then as you are making the interview, you just plug your affiliate link. And those people who want to learn the Arabic language online, they will click it and you will get a commission. Now, I mean, it's, it's, that, it's that simple. That's a... Now, I'm so it's, it's that simple. And so, and so these were a few ideas that... Um, these were a few ideas that, that are congruent with all these type of content that you can do on social media. And me, personally, especially for students of knowledge, you can think of finding things that are low... You know, if you don't have much time, like these interviews, for example, you barely have to edit anything. The only thing it takes time is just the sit down. And you probably do that already. You probably already talk to students, etc., etc. Now, I mean, for sisters could be the same thing. You could, a sister could interview other sisters. Now, you can make an account, just voice, voice interviews of sisters that are studying. Like, it could be an Instagram. It could be, it could, there's so many... There's so many ways on how to get eyes to your affiliate link. Once you get eyes to your affiliate link, it's just a game of numbers. Just continue to bring more eyes and, and, and you know, you're going to get the commissions. Until here, I hope you have benefit. Now, I have to tell you about our program. I hope that you have catched throughout the video the instructions to get access to the free module of Earn What You Learn. If you don't want to do all that and you and you like listen Muhammad I already trust you okay I know you know your stuff just tell me what I have to do to learn this and start working towards building my my affiliate you know system so I can start getting commissions if that's what interests you then in that case just join Anders Institute you don't have to want to learn the Arabic language you can just join Anders Institute pay the $900 a month or pay the $997 a year and just focus on the earn while you learn part of the of the program where I teach you how to be an affiliate for uh, for the program and earn money now I'm, and um, and so that you can do through the link in the description or in the first comment and for those who actually are not that convinced yet and you want to see what is this more about earn what you learn then I hope that you have found throughout the video the free module and that you are going to check it out following the instructions and that you will like it enough that at one point you decide to join us on Anders Institute and learn and become an affiliate marketer to then learn a skill that allows you to build your own thing and teach your descendants, your sons, how to use this modern powerful weapon, which is the internet, in order for you to make money. You see, when, when we have, when we read about Mujahid doing the tafsir of how hard it is, yani, as earning money in, in this life is hard, imagine how hard it was before. Now with social media, with AI, it's becoming easier and easier. So this is something you can benefit tremendously, your sons can benefit tremendously, your wife, your, your family, your whole surroundings, as, as, as Abdurrahman was saying earlier, not only him is benefiting, his whole family is benefiting, and a whole audience is benefiting because he's offering services. And so, and so it's very powerful. And for that reason, I encourage you to join us, and I encourage you to learn this skill. And at the end of the day, like I, to like I told you, I have spent thousands and thousands in online courses. I have always learned something. Even if I didn't go with that business model, that's why I highly encourage you that even if you feel like, oh, I don't want to do this or oh, whatever it might be, if you have watched until here, I can tell you are from those individuals that have already the little, the little spark that you need, the little interest that you need in order for you to convert that interest into results. So go ahead and even if you are not interested, at least go and click the link down below, click it. Um, you know, go through the um, go through the process of um, of giving your email, etc. So at least I have your email, 
and I can remind you from time to time. I can send you emails. I can send you more information and I can, um, with the time, motivate you to join us at one point, inshallah. Until here, I hope you have benefited. Let me know in the comments. I am very interested in knowing uh, what you guys thought. I know it was long. If you watched until here, let me know in the comments uh, because you're a real one, mashallah. And, uh, and yeah, let me know if you have any other questions in the comments as well. I will respond to all of those. And check, if you want to start a business, you will definitely need to watch this video in order for you to know how to get disciplined. As discipline is the only skill necessary to master any other skill. If it wasn't because of these teachings that I teach in this video, I wouldn't have been able after the tawfiq of Allah to achieve what I have achieved.